In today's video, I'm gonna give you 10 reasons as to why you're making some huge mistakes when buying golf clubs. Whilst I'll reveal my top 10, the number one is not being revealed till the very end of this video, so don't go anywhere. The first reason being stop buying golf clubs that you've seen your mates hit particularly well. That doesn't necessarily mean they're any good for you. Go ball, go, go. That's pin eye. The next thing you've got to stop doing is ignoring golf clubs that have a stigma attached to them. And by that, I mean things like seven woods, nine woods, maybe chippers, all those kind of clubs that you just won't go near because you're scared of the stick you might get from your friends. When in reality, they're exactly the kind of golf club that is gonna help you massively. The next thing you need to really consider is stop with brand loyalty. And by that I mean, it's very unlikely that one brand will have the best clubs right throughout the bag from putter through to driver. This one in particular is for you, John Sinclair. There are other brands than Titleist to mix up your bag with. The next thing you've got to make sure you get right is get the correct shaft in any of the clubs you use. Too many people decide they want to be either regular or stiff and that's the only consideration that they make when in reality there are so many variations on both those themes that you really need to consider the kick point in the shaft the weight of the shaft as well as whether or not it is reg or stiff so anybody who chooses not to get custom fit is nothing short of a lunatic See, that's because I've got the right shaft in it. Now my next thing is something that I'm probably guilty of, and that is stop buying clubs based on the way they look alone. Now I like something nice in my golf bag, but don't be persuaded to buy it just on looks alone. Is that the right yardage? It's a bit left. Oh, and a bit long. We'll take it. Wasn't the best of wedges, left me a long way from the hole. Almost in bin lid. Next one I want you to give serious consideration is the traditional bag setup. Start ignoring it. Now traditional bag setup to me has always been wedges, irons through to four iron. Then it's traditionally something like five wood, three wood driver. That's a load of nonsense. Doesn't work anymore, even on the tour, most golfers are throwing in some clubs that are unique to them and what they need specifically in their bag. And that doesn't change for you. As I said earlier, play clubs that suit you rather than ones that might have a stigma attached. So ignore traditional bag setup, get something that works for you. As ever, big thanks to our channel partner, McDonald Hotels, who have golf resorts at both Aviemore and Peebles in Scotland, Linden Hall in Northumberland, Portal in Cheshire and Hill Valley in Shropshire, all with incredible offers to play and stay at the resorts. For more details and special offers, make contact via the details on screen and don't forget to quote AVG20 and receive 20% off your green fees. Next up, buy clubs based on your ability. Not how you used to play golf, not how you hope to play golf, based on where you're at right now. So. If you used to be off five, but you're now playing off 15, and you've still got some blades in your bag, then maybe it's starting to tell you something. And vice versa, if you're playing in the 20s, and get some super game improvement irons in the bag, and make this game as easy as you possibly can. Buy clubs, clubs rather, that are relative to your ability. Hang on there, just hang on. We're going to be blocked out a little down the right. How nice is that? Portal looking fine. Next up, do not fall foul of buying the latest and greatest. Particularly in drivers, we all recognise that there's been limitations on how far that ball will travel. And without doubt, technology in most areas has come to a little bit of a standstill. So grab yourself some either second hand or older models and make sure you save some money. And then answers on a postcard as to how we weave this one around that big tree because my drive got blocked out. Time for a trick shot. <laughs> we 
which looked good for a long time until it hit the middle of a tree stump. That is such a nice strike. Yeah, we're back in the game because at the moment I'm sort of showing you how not to play the third hole at Portal, but that gives me a chance of making an up and down to save a par. But the next thing that you really have to stop doing is buying golf clubs to save your game and your swing instead of investing on your swing. Now, I know a lot of people think that this channel promotes new golf clubs. Well, it doesn't. I just feature and review them. But I would always suggest the first thing you do is invest in lessons and invest in your swing because ultimately that is going to be the best investment you ever make. Got the right yardage, get down. Yeah, not too bad. Now the next piece of advice focuses around these things, wedges, because they're hugely important part of your setup. And too often I see golfers who have a wedge setup that is very different from that of their irons. And what I mean by that is they'll play a super game improvement iron and decide to match that up with a blade like wedge. What's the logic in that? Why would anybody do that? Buy a super game improvement wedge if you've got super game improvement irons. It makes total sense. Get as much help as you possibly can in this game. I think we'll finish it there, drive down the middle. Drive down the middle with a shaft that was fit for me. And my number one tip and the biggest mistake that I think all golfers are making who don't do this when buying new golf clubs are absolute fools. I refer to them as lunatics even earlier on in the video, and that is custom fit. If you fail to get custom fit, then you're making a big mistake because by not doing so, you're ignoring so many possible advantages to your game. And in most cases, retailers will either do it for free or it'll become off your bill. So I think a lot of consumers confuse whether they think they pay for custom fit, pay a fee and want to ignore it. But in actual fact, in most cases, it's free or at least taken off the bill if you purchase the club. So why would you not take advantage of that kind of technology, that kind of information? It is the biggest mistake that most golfers make when buying new golf clubs, in my opinion. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Portal Championship Golf Course has been in great condition. It's been peeing down all morning. Absolutely fantastic. Hope you've enjoyed watching today's video and uh, let me know your thoughts on those mistakes and maybe you want to add one or two more of your own and I'll see you soon.